what is stream stream you can process the collection of object and there are two types of operation in that stream api like intermediate operation terminal operation and there are uh, there are support various methods like map flat map filter sorted these are the method we can use for uh, sequential object like that how it is different from collection it will reduce your code actually okay no need to write multiple codes suppose you want to sort something then you can directly use sorted method or if you want to filter something then you can use directly filter there are predefined method is there already so is okay. there an only difference or we can use bulk of operation at a time using stream memory wise is there any memory wise also better and uh, are you also working on microservices Microservices Eureka I do because Eureka I have created, but uh, API Sorry. project we are creating different Spring Boot projects. So okay. in that we have Eureka I have done that like I implemented that, but API gateway was not implemented by me. Okay. It was by my lead, so he has done it. I know the concept, but yeah, I can talk to you. Next. How can you explain me how you are doing? How the service Eureka? discovery? Yeah, service discovery. Is yeah, we have that configuration like uh, Eureka server and client concepts are there. So whenever we are creating a project, so which is acting as a server. Mm -hmm. So there uh, we have that dependency in the form where we have to put that Eureka server dependency. And in the YAML file, we have the service registry and all those uh, some values are there which needs to be false over there. Register mm -hmm. with Eureka and all those things are there. And whenever we are going for a project that needs to, uh, if that needs to, you know, to be there in the Eureka, that we need to be provided as Eureka client. And whenever we are going for anything that needs to be updated to this Eureka server, needs to be here. When we show this client into this server, okay. so we put that particular project with a dependency of client Eureka, so uh, Eureka client that we put it there. And there in the service registry, we put it as true, uh, register with Eureka, true, and all those things. And then we have port numbers as well for all the services that we define. Like service is running on this. For Eureka, I think 8761 is the port number. Yes. And for these all things, yeah, 8761. So it got registered over there. And if I open the Eureka 8761 on that particular in a URL, I'll open this. So I'll see which all things are registers, which all are up and running, what all ports are there. So those all information are there in Eureka. Okay. So I have implemented this. If I give a scenario, can you give me a logic? How would you code about that? Okay, so you have an integer and you need to reverse that integer in Java. Just give me logic. How would you do that? A uh, integer means that uh, uh, means like one two three is there. I have to print it. Uh, it has a three two one like the, uh, this, right? Huh? Sorry. A uh, integer is there three one two three. I have to print it as a uh, three two one, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, so that in this way we'll, we can do like uh, we'll calculate the reminder that uh, that uh, that integer mod ten and uh, that uh, so it will it will actually return the last digit of the last digit of the number and then like one two three is there one two three mod ten so it will return first three now and in next line I'll what I'll do that what I'll do I'll take another uh, one variable like reverse reverse equal to zero. So zero into ten plus that reminder means zero plus uh, now reverse equal to zero. So zero into ten is zero plus a reminder is now three. So three is added in the reverse. And then in next line integer integer equal to integer by ten. So one to three is now equal to one two now. So it will, I'll add this three line into a while loop. So now the in the in the next loop it will be one two mod ten. So it will return two. Now reverse is the three. So reverse into ten plus reminder means three into ten thirty plus reminder two. So thirty plus two reverse equal to thirty two. And then uh, that I'll do the integer by ten. So one two by ten equals to one now integer equal to one now in the next loop one mod 10 will return one now reverse is 32 32 into 10 means 3 320 plus reminder is one so 321 321 is, uh, is printed uh, reversed okay what are the different scope of beans in spring 
there are five scope singleton is a default scope then prototype then a request then the response and then global session so request session and global session sorry uh, do you know what is immutable class uh, yes uh, like uh, if you, we can't able to change that particular properties of the particular like uh, we can't able to change the uh, string is immutable uh, yes. thing right so yes. we can't uh, we can change like we can't change the address of that particular thing whatever if you are creating a new like if you are assigning a new value what it will do like it will create a new uh, instances of that particular uh, variable and it will uh, point into this uh, new address which is created how you are deploying your applications in your project it is like uh, from the start uh, we are maintaining our code in the github so in through the github uh, we are uh, we have uh, some pipelines and uh, we are config auto configuration like how it will be the merge request and uh, the whole the peer, peer review and all it will happen and maintained in a git repository after that uh, we will use jenkins pipeline to have some qual code quality to check the some code quality like uh, the sonar cube must be achieved and uh, the code duplicate should be avoided and all so we will have some coverage test unit coverage and all we will have some basic criteria in the jenkins so if all this passes jenkins will pass the pipeline so after the jenkins pipeline has been passed with uh, major criteria we will have a release automation tool so to have a to done with the deployment purpose the what are the release automation tool will have after the jenkins uh, module has been success it will trigger to the release automation tool in the release automation tool how it will happen the the jar file will be uh, extracted from the jenkins so and also at the, the next step it will download the artifacts correspond to the jar which which is present in the nexus so on uh, the jar file and the nexus artifacts will combine to form a war and the war will be uh, finally put it into our application so can you tell me what is a hash set what is the features of a hash set hash set is a feature is that means you cannot add duplicate data in it okay. and uh, you can uh, not add null value also hmm. the, the order is not preserved in that means that is a disadvantage i don't i don't know but the order is not preserved hash set is means uh, if you add the data in, in the that hash set that cannot in the hash code also firstly and then map to the uh, your bucket in. what is abstract class what is the use of abstract class actually uh, abstract class i uh, have the the abstract by use of abstract class using in the case of we have the implementation then we can use abstract class it has the abstract method as well as non abstract method and if any class extend the abstract class then those class make abstract class otherwise override on implementer method of abstract class what are these one to one one to many many to many relationship mapping in database design basically like you have a field exactly where you are like kind of map it to one in a table multiple rows in some another table so that is something called one to many mapping so uh, like you have like that those relationships being intent throughout your uh, tables like how you are storing your primary key and foreign keys so you have amplified here and then probably in another table you will be having like multiple addresses like a temporary address and a communication address and some other office address so for the same row probability will records coming up in the other table so like that again like uh, map to one also like you like multiple records here and then you have like single record uh, representing it in, uh, so like that those things are mapped and we used to this is the data as well in from the data what are the different spring modules you have worked on uh, with spring boot uh, we have used a uh, spring jpa uh, spring web uh, with the rest and uh, creating the rest apis and spring security uh, spring actuator module and spring schedulers we have used Spring's cache mechanisms, internal EH cache mechanisms, okay. and a few AOPs. I have done it in the some years back. Yeah. What are the different ways to create thread? We can create uh, using uh, thread using a uh, start of uh, method, and it is having a runnable class action, runnable method actually. Uh, we can start the thread using start of, and run of will run the thread. Sleep will uh, put the thread into sleep mode while other threads can use it. This is one way I know. Other thing means we can call the thread inside some other uh, function. while uh, the if the current thread uh, sleep of blocking a thread you have a scenario where you have a array list and from that array list you need to find values which are greater than 100 this array list contains some values integer values how do you do that in terms of uh, using java 8 so i use stream api for this so uh, that list array list dot stream dot filter and uh, if we we can use lambda expression so suppose that list uh, and some arrow mark for representing lambda so list so list is greater than 
greater than 100 dot uh, so we need to get only the list which is greater than 100 so so dot collect dot collector dot to list okay there is, can you use get method to create a resource yes i mean get is nothing but i mean just to call a method and let's say in the api itself we have written some logic to you know dynamically create an object so that, that is going to create the resource even though we won't pass anything can but you uh, within pass the, something with the get method any passing anything uh, we cannot pass i guess i mean in the implementation part we can do any logic kind of thing but uh, using the url itself i think uh, so to yeah. create a resource i mean you have to pass the details as well so in the http request itself if we are putting some header kind of thing and we are adding that value there and in api we are pulling that value though it's a get api call but in the http request if you set some header some ui and you are taking that header here and trying to you know, do that work in that way we can do but i guess purely by not passing any data in url we won't be able to create kind of a hack we can use we set some http headers there based on that value. do you know about a servlet life cycle in a servlet container it starts with the ng sorry not ng it's uh, with the init and we have a process to serve I did not worked on any of the servlets, but we started with Spring and Struts directly. So that's where I started working. We have a front-end controller that follows the front-end design patterns, and then it goes to uh, the controller. For there, it goes with the init, and then uh, some process method, and then I think destroy. Internally, I could not recollect the methods. I think front controller is introduced in with Spring. The thing is, the Spring or any other latest framework, Spring Boot or anything, internally it uses servlet. Exactly, you are right, you are right, but yeah, uh, but I will have to check on that also. 